uh, Wally Shadari was talking to us about the matter of concession and how it's important for the government to involve the private sector because they have so much on their hands and they cannot do it alone. But this matter of concession, recall, in recent times has also caused some level of controversy how the government went about it and even the matters, I think, taken to the court so to speak, with regards to this concession, speak to us what it is that perhaps government is not doing right with regards to this matter of concession. Well, on the issue of concession, we need to first analyze why we are doing it okay. and for what purpose. Right. And who is the end beneficiary of these things? Right. If I need to concession something, is it going to be more beneficial to Nigerians or to an individual? So that is the perspective that we must always put at the front burner. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the case of uh, Mavis and Fan, mm -hmm. Mavis had a very fantastic uh, thing that changed from the regular different system to a cute system, which means that it's a universal thing. Every airline can just log in on a particular like a computer at the counter and they can check in. But at the end of the day, the whole thing ended mm -hmm. with court cases and all the rest. So we need to first understand that this concession that we're doing, concession that we're doing, for whose benefit mm. in the long run? If you're looking at an individual, we'll never move forward. And I can pick uh, some points from um, uh, Mr. Wally Shadari mm. when he mentioned the fact that um, we, when a new person comes in, 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 into government, mm. they want to start afresh. And this has always been the trend in Nigeria, uh, in all sectors in Nigeria, whereby people don't want to continue what their predecessors has done. For me, advice for the uh, new minister is whatever you, you look at in terms of things that have been done by, the previous, uh, by his predecessor, look at the good ones, continue it, the bad ones, trash it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you so can also not build... Will it be for him to trash it? No. Yes. Interest. Easy. Yeah. There are interests. Yeah. Well, for every decision that was <laughs> taken before he came in, remember? Yeah, there were interests, but you have to look at the interest of Nigerians first. Absolutely. That's where we're backward. You can imagine if you go to Accra, you feel as if you are abroad. Yeah. But if you are in Nigeria, you feel as if you are still in one village. Mm. And we have the market. Yes. The number of, the volume of load factor, when I mean load factor, the number of passengers that we transport out of Nigeria is enormous. Mm. And this should be a source of revenue to the country. But alas, other carriers cannot come into Nigeria because of various things that they read about Nigeria, various things they experience about our international airports. So until we change, the paradigm, we change the situation and have a paradigm shift from looking at just abandoning infrastructure, focusing on infrastructure, and building how we can make this Nigerian airport uh, the, the, the hub of Africa, mm. that is when we'll get it right. Right. I, I still want to talk about this matter of trashing some things mm. and, and you know, keeping some things. Uh, because... Uh, there were so many controversies with regards to the decisions the previous ministers made. There were accusations here mm. and there. And I'm wondering how easy or challenging it might be for a Festus Kiamo to take certain deliberate steps, mm. bold steps, to perhaps send a message across that he is here to do something differently uh, with regards to the aviation sector that would yield results in the interests of Nigerians. I, I think it's very, very easy. Like I said, I said some of the projects we have, we had, uh, you know, uh, conceptualized by the former minister were not totally bad. Um, and like my friend said, he said the good ones we should take them, and the bad ones we should trash them. It's which at, is good, which is bad. At times, it's even very difficult to determine the ones that are bad in the sense that. Um, it depends on interpretation. Like, I've had a lot of um, uh, stories about national career and how yes. it was done and things like that. Um, if we look at the way that national airline was set up, um, it caused a lot of uh, controversies, mm -hmm. and rightly so, too. Because, because so uh, much was spent. Uh, uh, well, like, you know, somebody said that about 65 billion Naira was spent, but when the man was confronted, he said he got it on the internet. And when they asked the former minister, he said less than 3 billion Naira was spent for the whole uh, process. So we need a national carrier. Um, 
how it is done, it is what, it's even these things are not rocket science. We've seen smaller countries set up a line. We've seen Rwanda set up a line within two, three years. What is wrong with us as a nation? But also, you can't also discard people who have queried the setup of this airline. So what we need to do, what Mr. Kiyamo needs to do is to sit down and say, okay, let's look at all these interests. Is it in the interest of Nigeria? Is it in the interest of uh, an individual? If it's in the interest of Nigeria, let us go ahead with it. If it's not in the interest of Nigeria, let us have everything, either to discard it or to rejig it or to rework it and make it work so that everybody will be on the same page. If you also look at the MRO, um, Maintenance Repair Overhaul, mm -hmm. it's also a good project in the sense that if we have an MRO, it's going to help the domestic airline, it's airlines, and it's even going to help international airlines to do their line maintenance immediately or even be checked. Because we spend close to 300 billion naira annually ferrying our aircraft outside the shores of this country, overseas, for maintenance. Yeah. So if we have this MRO, it's going to help our airlines, and it will also reduce AOG, aircraft on ground, the time you keep an aircraft on ground. But are we going to have enough um, personnel to handle um, so much of these, um, so many of these uh, aircraft that are going to be serviced? So the MRO is good. If we also look at concession, concession is good everywhere in the world. Even in the United States, they do concession. Even in the UK, they do concession. A Nigerian, um, Dr. Ogunlesi, was um, given the contract to manage um, Gatwick Airport, the second biggest airport in the UK, and it was a success. So why can't we engage these people to help us? People who have already done something in the past, people like Dr. Wali Babalakin, let us see that and see how we can um, begin to close this um, Inf infrastructural gaps Jobs. that we have in the aviation industry because where is government going to get almost two, three, two or three trillion naira to fix infrastructure? Infrastructure is not just um, fixing runway lights or airport. You also need a lot of things to do. And we have like, so many. Ah, we have um, like um, communication too, um, airspace, um, our towers, um, air traffic control, we need a lot of money to do this. Where is government going to get almost two trillion um, naira to fix some of these um, uh, things? Mm. And if you also look at our airports, we have over 30 airports in Nigeria. States are building airports. Yeah. Uh, people are building airports. And when they finish building this airport, they hand them over to FAN to manage. Mm. Where is FAN going to get the resources? Only four of our airports are viable. Very, very viable. Out Lagos, of out of over 30, exactly. Just four. At, yes, of course. At times you have even one flight a day to some airports, and you have to put people there. You have to station people there. You have to run that airport almost 24 hours or maybe 12 hours in a day. So where are you going to get this money? You're only getting money from Lagos. Lagos is the highest revenue earner for fun, followed by Abuja, mm. uh, followed by Port Harcourt, and next one is Kanu and Oweri. So where are you going to get money to fix some of these uh, equipment? And once an airport is built, you can't close it because of uh, you need it in case of emergency. Right. So um, we are stuck, but we need to look for a solution to solve some of these problems that we have. That is why I say his work is really cut, cut out, out for, for him. him. So because, you know, aviation is very elitist. So mm. people, there's so much interest in aviation. People want to know what is happening. Let me give you an example. Like I, I told somebody that aviation is safe. He said, no, 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 it's not. I say, you hardly hear of plane crash. But on a daily basis, even on every hour, a car is crashing somewhere. But nobody talks about that, but aviation, because uh, at least like you, <laughs> flight <laughs> to air transportation, that is when anything happens in aviation, you see it is highly globalized. And because the, the level attention. of impact uh, yeah, is much, fatality. as the level of fatality is much more than what you see on the road. It's not true. Time. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. As we been... have more deaths on the road compared to aviation is, safe, is one of the safest. When there is a crash. <laughs> the, the, the 
tendency for one to survive, yes. it, it's perhaps... It, it rarely happens. It rarely happens. It course. rarely happens. But for when it class, happens, <laughs> you can say that there will be survivors. So it depends on the type it of depends. impact. Yes, that's, impact. What, that's why I said <laughs> okay. It differs. Okay. So that's why people weigh it and say that uh, it's difficult when you take the aviation or airspace is not mm. as safe as the roads. But interesting, uh, the matter of challenges. There's been so many challenges that um, Nigerians are facing. Earlier I mentioned the fact that um, just yesterday we got the report that there are chances that um, the ticket fares might rise up to 250, talking about those traveling from Lagos to Abuja. But aside that, we see that there is a disparity when you look at the, the cost of ticket fares from Nigeria to other countries as against other African countries, for instance, Ghana, uh, Senegal, like you mentioned, where we see that some persons decide to travel to these countries to fly to other European right. countries. What is really at the heart of this disparity that we are witnessing, where Nigerians have to pay so much as against other African countries? Well, um, the ticketing thing from IATA, it's... Um, dollarized by default all tickets are dollarized by default and for you to get a good deal or a good fare if the exchange rate in your country is high for you to change that money to dollar your ticket will be high in the last one month or two the amount of tickets in dollars remains same very rare situation that it belongs to it but the amount in Naira will continue to fluctuate as long as we don't have stability in the Forex. If exchange rate to dollar is five Naira to a dollar and a ticket costs 4,000, if you multiply five Naira times 4,000, the amount you'll be paying in Naira equivalent will be very low. So as long as our exchange rate has not been um, brought to a particular level where we feel it's comfort. not stable. It's not, it, as long as it's not stable, okay. we'll keep having this disparity in um, ticket fares, ticket sales, and there's no way we can change it. Hmm. So there's no way the, the, the ministry can come in now to address that matter. It's hmm. off the hands of the ministry. The ministry has no control over the, <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the forex. So until the country, the economy of the country hmm. stabilized. stabilized, and we're able to see that the exchange rate, Naira, Naira is gaining more power, than the way it used to be and their stability, then you will see that there will be changes. In other countries, the, the difference between their local currency and the dollar, the dollar mm. is stable. It's minimal, yeah. And it's minimal. It's something they can you know, afford. Not when dollar is about 800 or 1,000 Naira. And the ticket is just $2,000. If you multiply 1,000 by the 2,000, you'll be paying out of, out of pocket a lot of money. Mm. So that's the major problem that we need to resolve. Economy needs to be stabilized, uh, then dollar needs to be stabilized, and then we can benefit from good sales of tickets. Now, how about domestically? This the cost of aviation fuel. Yeah. And it's also one major issue mm. that um, people have been talking about, and also multiple taxation, taxation and yeah. all of those. How do you want that resolved? Mm. I, I think um, there are two issues that are beyond um, Mr. Keyamo, mm. the issue of Forex. He has no control over um, Forex matter. He doesn't also have control over jet fuel in the sense that... Um, <laughs> but airline operators are seeking concession one way or the other. Uh, yes, I think the former minister tried to make sure that um, um, help them through the federal government then to ensure that um, it was stable at a, at a point because it was going out of the window mm. at that uh, period. And also access the, to foreign exchange. To foreign exchange. These are two mm. issues that have um, compounded the problems of um, uh, the local airlines um, because the forex um, determines a lot of um, um, how you, what, whatever you're going to charge, even the um, jet fuel, which, which takes about 30% of your revenue 30 or 35 percent. So if aviation fuel takes 30 percent of your revenue, it means the airlines are not making profit. 
profit, honestly. I, I feel for them. But at the really? same time, yes, I really feel for them because um, if you also, cost of maintenance, aviation is highly dollarized. Everything you do in aviation is dollar, dollars. So, um, but they have a problem to which how, <laughs> if you raise your fares so highly, yeah, even at 70,000, 80,000 Naira, a lot of people are still finding it very difficult to fly. They would rather go by road. And we know the things that are happening on our roads. So for them to really not make profit, uh, for them to really break even, that's the right word. Mm -hmm. For them to break even, I think the airlines will charge nothing less than 150,000. But you also look at the purchasing power of many Nigerians. How many Nigerians can afford to um, go travel by air? It's the same set of people that are traveling, businessmen, politicians, and um, um, people like you also. People like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Honestly, I feel for them, and I believe that um, this is where the minister needs to come in, in terms of multiple taxation, how to help them to cushion some of this effect. You have over 28, 30 charges, you charging a line. If you see a 70,000 Naira uh, ticket, that money does not go to the airline. Maybe only 25,000 or 30,000 goes to the airline. <laughs>